Okay, um, learning target four is determine an appropriate domain and range in terms of a real world context. Um, we kind of know what domain and range are already, so the first thing that I want you to do is uh, just review them, um, kind of what you know about them in, in your own words, sort of. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be um, in terms of a real world context just yet. Um, but go ahead and just write down what you know already, and then we'll kind of come together, um, and I'll give you my thoughts as well. So go ahead and hit pause. Okay, um, so the way that we have talked about domain and range, and this isn't going to change before you just kind of freak out and think that I'm changing everything all over again. Um, this isn't going to change, um, but the way that we have talked about domain and range so far was that the domain was kind of like our input, which typically we associate with x. Um, x, we typically associate with the independent variable. Okay, so those are sort of the connections that I make um, or that I think about when thinking about domain. Um, range, we think of as the output or the y values, which now we know as the f of x values, and this is the dependent variable. And you don't necessarily have to copy this down if you don't want. This is just sort of how I think about it. Um, but you should probably have something related to that. Um, and the way that we've talked about domain and range in the past um, has kind of been with, with this domain as like a, all of the included x values. So, you know, it could be, um, uh, you know, for x from... Uh, you know, negative 1 to 28 or something. I think that was something close to that was your, uh, was one of your focus problems. Um, and then we talked about the range as the y values or the f of x values from, you know, 0 to 12 or something like that. Okay. Um, and so we talked about them as a range. Now we're going to talk about kind of um, what makes sense. So I think intuitively this learning target will be very easy for you. Um, but real quick, just a few kind of concrete examples here. Um, you'll be asked to define the domain and range sometimes. Um, the domain, again, are, if you look back here, all the included x values. Um, so the domain for this graph right here looks like we have an x value of negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now notice I didn't just say negative 5 through 5 because it's not a continuous line here. Okay, We're missing these values in between. Just the dots, those are our only x values. Okay. And so our range are all of the y or f of x values. So it looks like we got 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. And nothing below that, nothing above that, nothing in between. We don't have like a 2 point, you know, 2, 5 or something right here. Okay, it's not included. All right. Um, the domain and range of this next one over here, it looks like the domain, the x values range from 0 to 360. So we can say 0 to 360. The range um, looks like our maximum up here is 1, our minimum down here is negative 1. So we can say negative 1, 2, 1. And again, I'm including this as um, all-inclusive. 
all x values from 0 to 360, all y values or f of x values from negative 1 to 1. All of those are included because this is a continuous line. On C over here, um, we have these arrows on the ends, which means that technically this line stretches out forever. Um, so our domain is from negative infinity to infinity. And our range is from negative infinity to infinity. Okay, because we have to think of this line as going on forever and ever and ever in either direction, um, getting greater, getting less, um, x increasing on forever, decreasing on forever and ever and ever. All right. Um, now let's talk about a, a real world situation. Um, and we're not necessarily going to look at like an equation or anything. Um, but in the, in the previous video, you had a function which converted um, degrees uh, back and forth from Celsius and Fahrenheit. Um, we're going to kind of just use some number sense and come up with what an appropriate domain and range might be in terms of this context. Okay, so think appropriate domain. Um, we were converting from degrees Fahrenheit. So again, our x was Fahrenheit and our f of x was Celsius. We converted from Fahrenheit to Celsius. Um, and that's what our function did. It took Fahrenheit and spit out Celsius. So our domain would be all of the appropriate Fahrenheit values. Okay, if we're talking about um, the weather outside, you know, we don't, and I'm being very generous here, but we really don't get anywhere below like negative 30, okay? Um, at least I, I sincerely hope I never see any temperature below that. Um, at the same time, we never really get above 120. Um, at least I hope not. So, I, again, I'm being generous, but that would be an appropriate domain. Okay, if you were going to make a graph of this, you wouldn't. You would never put an x value less than less than negative 30. There'd be no point in graphing that. Um, so that's why we're talking about some kind of number sense here, appropriate domain. Um, you kind of have to think realistically. Talking about an appropriate range, um, so we're looking at appropriate Celsius values. Um, we could maybe go as low as, as negative 30 or so. That's extremely cold, but, um, you know, again, being generous, we could maybe go as low as negative 30. Um, on the upper end is where we see a big difference. 120, you know, converts to about 50 or so um, Celsius. So we're never we're never going to get much hotter than that. That's that's pretty hot um, Celsius. So um, that would be kind of an appropriate range um, in terms of uh, in terms of Celsius here. The before class um, tells you to define uh, an appropriate, and I'll add that word in there, appropriate domain and range for the following functions. If this is your independent variable, in other words, hours spent studying, that is your x, that's your domain. The dependent variable, that's your f of x, that's your range. Okay, so think about a realistic um, domain for hours spent studying and a realistic range for score earned on a test. Um, same over here for an appropriate uh, domain for t-shirts sold, an appropriate range for profit. And there is a little note here that says the um, startup costs for the business were five, $500. Um, in other words, the business had to pay $500 uh, right off the bat for, for all these startup costs. 